Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Dundon and today we're talking about disease and in particular infectious versus non-infectious disease. Is there a difference? Yes. And we're going to learn about what that is. So if I just click into here, I'm just going to show you a range of images of diseases. Some of them infectious and others not. So what is the difference between them? Before we get into that, let's just decide what a disease is. And a disease is really anything that uh, causes some issue with the body, either to the way it functions or to a specific structure. And that particular disease will have some specific symptoms to go along with it. So it harms the body in some way, it's ongoing, and it has specific symptoms. So that's a disease. Now, not all diseases have to be contagious. Some can be non-contagious, and that's what we're looking at today. But what we've got to be mindful of, it's just not an injury. So if you sprain your ankle, that's not a disease. So basically, uh, non-infectious diseases can be either genetic, they can be um, from malnutrition, or they can be from environmental or lifestyle factors. All of these things can contribute to non-infectious disease. And we're going to have a look at a few of them in detail. So for example, genetic disorders. So these are things that are passed on in your DNA from your parents. So these are things that generally um, might run in a family, for example. So I've got a few here. Um, we've got Huntington's disease, sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome, although Down syndrome is probably more of a disorder than a disease, and haemophilia. And if we look at this diagram here, this is a very common way that um, non-infectious diseases pop up in a population or definitely in a family. We generally have maybe, we could have here an, uh, an affected father and an unaffected mother, and then they have children um, where because they only pass on one of their chromosomes, not all of the individuals might be affected. So in this case, we only have an affected son because he got the affected um, the chromosome that had the issue on it, so that one was passed on, but he got a unaffected chromosome from his mother, but that was enough to still be an affected son. In this case, the unaffected daughter has two healthy copies of chromosomes, one from the father, one from the mother, and the same with the son, but here we have a daughter, one with the affected chromosome and one with the unaffected, and that was enough to see the disease. Now, for when it's like this, where you only need one copy, these are diseases that are likely to come on later in life, so they still have a chance to reproduce. If these were going to be threatening from the very start, um, it's less likely that they would actually even um, be able to reach reproductive age. I've got a fly in my face. Got him. Okay, what's more likely is that um, you, if you have just one copy, that you don't get the disease. And so you actually need an affected father and affected mother to be carriers to then get the disease. So that's probably more likely. But even so, these are non-infectious non diseases passed on through genetics. Malnutrition. This is just simply a diet issue. So I've got two uh, examples here, uh, Quashacor, you can never say that correctly, and Marasmus. These are just two uh, nutrition disorders and generally happens in third world countries where they don't get a balanced diet. Um, you can see that you get that distended abdomen, scaly skin, some swollen ankles and things like that. And they're simply just from not getting enough protein and enough calories through carbohydrates and things like that. And again, in, in this case on the right, um, we can get severe muscle wasting, wrinkled skin, hair loss, and like an old person's face. Again, just nutrition, not, you can't pass it on. This one's scurvy, uh, so you remember the pirates and things like that. Uh, they don't get enough vitamin C and don't get enough things from fruit. They get these uh, gum disease and some other issues as well, it's quite nasty. And a goiter, which is basically an overactive thyroid gland that comes from a iodine deficiency. So all of these are from nutrition. 
Then we've got environment. So these are things like toxins, um, things like radiation. So even uh, cancer, skin cancer, is caused by sun radiation. That's a disease, but not infectious. And allergies. So allergies are basically a body's response to something that doesn't actually harm it. So it's actually the immune response, the inflammatory response from the body that actually causes people harm rather than the actual um, thing causing the allergy response in the first place, like nuts, pollen, those types of things. So again, disease, but non-infectious. And so I've got a, a list here that you can pause the video and, and copy some of these examples, but we've basically got skin contact, ingestion, injection, and inhalation. These are all ways that you might come exposed, become exposed to an allergy. And some of these allergies develop later in life as well, which can be quite problematic. And the final one, lifestyle. So this is all about the decisions that you're making, diet, exercise, what you put into your body, alcohol, um, smoking, those types of things. So I've got a few listed here, obesity, um, cardiovascular disease, so issues with specifically the heart and the blood vessels surrounding the heart, diabetes, um, pancreas, um, producing, struggling to produce insulin or the receptors responding to insulin are no longer responding in the way that they should and that's generally from overeating, and cancer as well. So let's, let's talk infectious disease. Well, infectious disease is basically a disease caused by the spread of microorganisms. And I've got a picture of uh, the most common ones here. So we've got parasites, protozoa, fungi, bacteria. These are all um, cell, so these are all living microorganisms. And then we have a couple of non-living organisms viruses and prions. So prions are basically mutated or not correctly assembled proteins that have undesirable effects. So the most common ones that you'll come across when you go to the doctor are going to be viral and we actually have really nothing um, to help with viruses except for vaccinations. Um, but 90% of the um, colds and flus that we get are from viruses. If you come in with some kind of bacterial um, issue, they might be able to prescribe an antibiotic um, but most of the time it's going to be a virus. But these are some of the other things that we could get as well. Fungal infections, um, protozoa, malaria, and parasites like tapeworm. Check that out on YouTube. Just check out longest tapeworm pulled out of an arm or something like that. They're, they're pretty crazy. Okay, so how do we get them? Well, they need to enter our body some way because they're contagious. They're an infection. They infect us. They need to get into our body. How does that happen? Well, basically through any orifice. Our skins are a fantastic barrier and we'll get into that later on, but they get in through any orifice. So for example, they could come in uh, through the mouth, uh, through the ear, um, lots of sexually transmitted diseases here come from the exchange of fluid. Exchange of fluid. Okay, so unprotected sex means that we get a transmission of infectious diseases and also the nose. So any way that we can get inside our body is gonna be a way that these infections, these microorganisms can get in and then start causing issues and multiplying and things like that. So pretty much everything that we use to fight disease, um, infectious disease is we, one, try and prevent anything from getting inside our orifices and then once they're in, we try and support the body's natural processes of fighting disease. So hope that helps. That was a really, uh, hopefully a really good run through of infectious versus non-infectious disease and how they come about. And then we're gonna tackle exactly how our body fights these in later videos. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to get more videos coming up. Mr. Dunham, enjoy. Bye.